10 exclusive new developments into our investigation of these field drug testing kits. We've been looking into these kits for three months now, how they work, how police use them, how innocent people can wind up in jail. Tonight at 10, Fox 13's Gloria Gomez takes us inside a lab where top scientists put these kits to the test. And these are experiments you've got to see to believe. This military officer from Tampa Bay did not break the law. Neither did this bird watcher or this mechanic who raises chickens. But police arrested all three of them on drug charges based on the false results with the NARC-2 and NARCO pouch field drug tests. Lab results cleared them months later and the state dropped the charges, but they all say it messed up their lives. We are guilty until proven innocent. Dr. Omar Bagaza agrees. I think it's totally unjust. It's awful. Dr. Bagaza is a top research scientist at Claflin University in Orangeburg, South Carolina. This is the very sophisticated machine. His lab is recognized by the International Association of Chiefs of Police for forensic science excellence. But he's a strong critic of law enforcement's field drug test kits. This is not the way a human being should be treated. Bagaza and two of his colleagues, Dr. Sherilyn Hagenpay and forensic scientist Chris Adonke, invited us to observe a series of controlled tests on field drug test kits purchased from two websites, Safariland Group and Searchy, which sell products to law enforcement agencies. But it doesn't matter who the manufacturer is, all three believe all field drug test kits are unreliable. The chemistry, the chemicals in the tests are the same uh, regardless of who makes them. They show us run-of-the-mill coffee, basic items, aspirin, we'd find a Hershey's chocolate bar in any supermarket, oregano, a spice. What we're going to do today is look at these common materials and test them in the kits and look at the color reaction. They start with something you may have in your medicine cabinet. Mucinex. Watch as he breaks the first ampule and mixes the colors. You see the color reaction occur almost immediately. Dr. Hagen Pay says the over-the-counter cough medicine in the NARC-2 kit tests positive for heroin and morphine in the sample. That's just the start. I'm sure we've all had one, a Hershey bar. After collecting some shavings, going to introduce a few small pieces of chocolate into the test kit. The color changes in both the NARC-2 and Nick kits. You'll see this pinkish purplish color develop. It takes just seconds. Suggesting that this material may contain marijuana. Someone could be arrested based on this color change. From chocolate to soapy water from this natural bar of soap. Now we're adding that to the pouch. Dr. Hagen Pay says the narco pouch tested positive for the date rape drug GHB. Punk rocker Don Bowles was arrested on drug charges in 2007 on the results of a field drug test called the Narco Pouch 928, which tested positive for GHB. The official state lab in California later confirmed it was soap, not dope. Coffee. Watch what happens to coffee in an ARC-2 test pouch. We are seeing what is shown here on the pouch, that a pink color suggesting that this material could contain marijuana. But again, it's coffee. So how did the NARC-2 do with aspirin? Another false positive. And now a spice most of us have in our kitchen, oregano. The color change in the narco pouch test kit raises a red flag. We know that this is a false positive because this is, this is oregano. Something wasn't clear cut. We're gonna look at sugar, mixtures of pink and blue. You can see that we have trouble interpreting the test. And you can imagine that in the field, it's even more difficult. The sugar test was inconclusive, but watch how the narco pouch test kit shows something from nothing. I'm opening the pouch and exposing it to air. You heard right, nothing but air. Again, watch what happens. This could be interpreted as a potential positive for marijuana, when in fact it's just air. This shows us right here how unreliable these tests are. Now, one last test. In this case, we're not gonna open the pouch at all. Maybe the most compelling. They're both clear. There's no color in there presently. The narco pouch test kit was never opened. There's nothing in it, yet. Indicating that a material is marijuana when in fact it's not. There's no substance in there, there at all, and yet it turned orange.
most of the time they are just false positive. I think they're totally useless. While this experiment only tested the reliability of the narco pouch, Nick and Narc 2, Dr. Bagaza says no field drug test of any kind is accurate. I don't think this should be a news at all. Dr. Frederick Whitehurst agrees. Those test kits are extremely dangerous. Whitehurst was an FBI forensic scientist for 16 years. I have a doctorate in chemistry. I have no confidence at all in those test kits. He's researched field drug tests for more than a year. The folks that make that are impinging on the freedom of people in this country. It's not, we're not making tires. We're not making bubble gum that tastes bad. We are putting people, human beings, in cages with those, those things. This military officer knows all too well what can happen. But it puts a shadow over people who are wondering, you know, maybe this person has done this. He waited nearly five months for the state crime lab to clear his name. And justice pretty much sum it up just about perfectly. So Mark, as you saw, these substances right here in front of us tested positive for illegal drugs with these test kits. Keep in mind, we reached out to the manufacturers. Right. There's two, Searchy and Safari Land Group. One of them did respond. Safari Land Group said this, quote, field drug tests are presumptive in nature and should only be used after an officer's identification of probable cause is present and should be followed by further confirmatory testing. Keep in mind they're not regulated and they confirmed that today that they're not regulated so the FDA nor the Department of Justice is looking into this or, or checking. So the these checks really should not be used as the sole reason. There's got to be more probable cause but as your story showed some officers are using that as the sole reason. Exactly to and okay. that's the nail on the head here. Right. That's happening. And more to come. Absolutely. Gloria thanks.